Romans chapter 15, very quickly, ladies and gentlemen. Romans chapter 15. I've got a word from God today. Um, in case you are wondering, this one that the pastor is just singing and dancing and shouting. Is it I didn't prepare? Praise God. Even if I did not prepare, you will not know. Only God will know. Amen. <laughs> because there is enough in the storage to carry for a while. Amen. All right, Romans chapter 15, verses 17 to 19. Are you there? Praise the Lord. The Bible said, Therefore I have risen to glory in Christ Jesus in the things which pertain to God. For I will not dare to speak of any of those things which Christ has not accomplished through me. That means I'm not going to speak of the things that Christ has done in the life of delight. I'm not going to speak of the things that Christ has done in the life of Olaumi. I'm not going to speak in the things of the things Christ has done even through Obina and his ministry, praise God. But I'm going to speak of the things which Christ has accomplished through me. If I write that, you will say I'm a very bold and a very proud person. But that's what Paul said. He said, I'm going to write of the things which Christ has accomplished through me. Christ could have done it, but he used me. He accomplished it through me. Amen. He said, in word and in deed. That means not only in speaking, but there were evidences. That's what he was saying. There were evidences. He said, to make the Gentiles obedient. Don't let's talk about the word obedient. And then verse 19 says, in mighty signs and wonders, by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem, round about to Elikron, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. This man was so bold. He said, I've gone through cities. Through cities. He covered a region. He said, and I have preached the gospel of Christ. Give me 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And then we read verses 4 to 5. 1 Corinthians 2. 1 Corinthians 2, and then verses 4 to 5. Um, again, this was Paul again speaking. He said, but the mature man, 4, 4, not 14, 4, 4, 4. Listen, he said, and my speech, and my preaching, were not with persuasive words of human wisdom. Have you had people speak to you and you know that they are, they are mouth is sweet? Speak to me. You've... <laughs> Very gifted people, they, they have mouth. He said, I have mouth, but it's not my mouth. He said, they were not in persuasive words of human wisdom. He said, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. Then give me the next verse. Said something about your faith. That your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. This morning, for a few minutes, I'm just going to share very, very, very fast uh, on what I've titled the power of the Spirit. The power of the Spirit. Whether you doubt what I said or not, I've got business to do today, right? So I'm just going to tell you that it's going to be a very short sermon. The power of the Spirit. The power of the Spirit. Are you there? The power of the Spirit. I'm supposed to read Micah chapter 3 and then verse 8. Micah said, the prophet said, I am full of power. Read that together. One, two, three, go. Is that how people who are full of power speak? Read it again. Answer. He said, I am full of power by the Spirit. Father, we thank you because this morning your word will come to deliver, to liberate, and to set us free. We thank you, Father, for your word. Thank you, God, because as you have given me, I'll give your people. After now, we'll be better people. In Jesus' name, and amen. Please be seated in God's presence. Amen. Right. The power of the Spirit. Micah said, surely. He's not doubting it. He said, I am full of power by the Spirit. Listen, dear friends and people of God. It is not the gospel if it is bereft of power. Can I say that to you again? It is not the gospel if it lacks power. I am careful to say everything I say and I'm going to say to you today. Listen. 
the gospel of grace that you have received is so full of power that to live a life without power is a waste. It's redundancy. If you are still being chased around by every wind of doctrine, if you are being chased around by every witches and wizards around your neighborhood, if at night you cannot sleep, and if in the morning you are afraid of going out, and if tomorrow you are also afraid of the future, it is because you are yet to fully grasp the essence of the power that is in Christ Jesus. Listen to this. A car can be very exalted. Let's, let's use an example here. Permit me to use one of the most powerful vehicles that the world has ever produced, a Ferrari. If you have a Ferrari that the turbo engine can get you to 200 kilometers, 250 kilometers, and it can get to 250 kilometers per hour in seconds, right? Much more than, faster than your Toyota, no matter how bad you push the accelerator. Now, that vehicle is a very powerful vehicle. Ferrari is very powerful. Uh, a Jaguar is also very powerful. Um, an Aston Martin is a very, is another powerful vehicle. Uh, but, but one thing you should understand is that no matter how powerful they are, without fuel, they will not work. Then also, um, for many of us who have vehicles, or if I was in Anda City, I would say for those of you who have motorcycles, right, but there's nobody with motorcycle in this part of Lagos, right? So it's either you have a vehicle or you have a vehicle or you have your leg equal, right? So, uh, but, but we understand that your vehicle will not work or your car won't work without the petrol, which is what makes it work. So that believers do not lack power. Believers lack the fuel to make it work. The fuel for your life to work is the person of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, there is no believer that is not powerful. The reason we have many believers that are not powerful, that are parked like a Jaguar in the garage of life, is because they have not come to an understanding of what they carry and what the person of the Holy Spirit means to them. Therefore, the day you receive the Holy Ghost, you also receive power. Can I say that to somebody? That the day you receive the Holy Ghost, the day you came into a communion with the Holy Ghost, you also came into power. The reason that power is not yet manifested is not because it is not there. It is because you do not know, neither do you understand. The greatest problem for believers today is not that Jesus hasn't done anything. It is lack of knowledge of what he has done for you. Therefore, if I am not working as I ought to, if I'm still running away from the things I should be chasing, then there is a problem. The problem is not of Christ. Can I shock some of us today that Jesus won't do anything for you again that he has not done? Right, so Jesus do it, Jesus do it. It's a lot of prayers we do pray. But allow me to say to you that he won't do anything that he has not done. Therefore, the Bible says to us that he's seated on the right hand of the majesty. For somebody who is seated, it means he has finished his work. It means there's nothing more to do. But what am I supposed to do, therefore? I'm supposed to live my life in the fullness of the finished work of Calvary. He was not finished until he sat down. The purpose that he's seated means he's done. That he's seated means he's done. Therefore, if you are not living as God wants you to live, it is not the problem of God, it's a problem with you. So this morning, I want you to have an understanding that if you can pray in tongues, that means that is the evidence of being baptized with the Spirit. It's a, it means that you can, if you can pray in tongues, can you try it? Try and pray in tongues, let me see. I'm looking at those who cannot. All right, so if you can pray in tongues, it means that you are powerful. Because you've got an evidence that there is a baptism of the Spirit upon you. Jesus said, you shall receive power. Look at that verse of scripture. He said, after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Do you see that? So he said that power will come when what comes? Speak to me. So when the Holy Spirit comes, what comes again? So there is no separation. And now I receive power, then I receive the Holy Spirit. The moment you receive the Holy Spirit, you have received that vehicle. The moment you receive the Holy Spirit, you have received that vehicle. But if the vehicle is not working, it is not the problem of the manufacturer, it's the problem of the owner. If I refuse to go to the petrol station or the gas station to get some fuel, then my car will be redundant. Many of us have our spirits redundant because we have refused 
to get into the filling station and get recharged again. Therefore, Paul was speaking to believers. He said, do not be filled with wine in which is essence. He said, but keep being filled with the Holy Ghost. Why? Because it is the Holy Ghost that will assure that you walk in the fullness of God's plan for your life. Can I say to you that it is not the tangibility of the gospel if you cannot heal, if you cannot deliver, if you cannot set free, and if you cannot transform your life. If whatever you receive cannot change you, then what you receive is not Christ. Our God is powerful and the gospel is full of power. Yes, power to heal, to liberate, to deliver, and to make all. And yesterday morning as I began to pray, I asked the Lord, what would you do for your people? What would you do for your people? I, I, I knew that it would not be much in numbers. I already knew uh, because um, people have reasons not to go to church. Rain is one of the primary reasons. I mean, if you hear tan, tan, tan on your ceiling. Some people have planned they were not coming because they did not believe the rain would stop this morning. Because the rain has been raining. It's been raining for like seven days. So some people have already told them. So a pastor asked me, it was raining. Not knowing that God had a plan, that that rain would stop. I mean, some people don't even like that it has stopped, but it has stopped, praise God. Uh, and so they were not going to come. You know why they didn't show up? Again, a lack of power. A lack of understanding of what the church represents. You see, when we gather as a people, it's another refueling station. It's an opportunity again to be refueled. It's an opportunity again to have your spirit man recharged. Listen, there are what we call rechargeable batteries. And they are one of the most powerful batteries you can find. Um, alkaline batteries, rechargeable. And you see, when you use that battery and you exhaust the energy on it, the battery is still powerful. But the battery can't do much until you go and charge it again. What the wise does, like those five virgin women, what you do is that you must ensure that before it runs out, you keep recharging it. And that's what Paul said. Paul said, uh, keep being filled with the Holy Ghost, so that you don't get exhausted in life, so that you don't get tired of living. There is a need to get your battery recharged. The Bible says that as it concerns power, that God is powerful. Once as it's spoken, twice have I heard, 62, 11 of Psalms, that power belongs to God. Twice. Once he said it, and twice I see. And I found out that power belongs to him. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 4, where the word of a king is, there is power. Where the word of a king is, there is power. Therefore, every time you read the scripture, which is the word of the king, you are having fellowship with power. People say, I don't have power. I can't have power. I can't get access to power. You don't need power if you have the Holy Ghost because you already have power. And my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but demonstration of the spirit and of power. Paul was saying, I preach what, what I preach to you is so full of power. It's not just oratory, it is power. It's not sounding wise, it is power. Power to heal, power to deliver, power to set free. The Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7, For God has not given unto us spirit of fear, but of power of love and of a sound mind. Of power of love and of a sound mind. Therefore, the spirit you have received, again I'm telling you, is the spirit of power. Oh, Mark 20, 29, Bible was speaking. He said, you do not, you do hear because you do not know the, you do not know the scriptures, nor the power of God. You hear. Why? Because you do not know the scriptures, nor the power of God. 272 times in the scripture, the Bible speaks concerning power. Why? Because power is important to God. That word power means vigor. That word power means energy. That word power, it means strength. That word power means ability to do. That word power means energy. You see, when you are just tired, you don't know why you are tired. You are just tired. You are lethargic. Your spirit man, your soul, your body does not know what to do. What you need to do is to press in, to pray in tongues some more. Have you been wearied? Like you just felt like, are there any people in church? You just get confused sometimes. You know you have eaten. You are not hungry. You have slept. But something still feels unusual about you. You still feel abnormal. I don't want to use the word abnormal. But you still feel like something is still needed. Have you been there before? And you see, many times what people do is that they watch some movie. When you feel so uncomfortable like that, your spirit man is low on battery. That's what he's telling you. That's why you feel so uncomfortable. That energy that can be recharged has gone so down. 
And so you, just, you feel unusual. But you know what we do most times? We actually just watch some Netflix. You flick it away, praise God. At certain times, we let the pride of Amazon help us some more. So we get comfortable some more. And because your soul now is recharged, your soul lies to you that you are fine. Because you watch a movie, so your soul tells you, I'm good now, I'm good now, I'm better now. I'm good now, you see, you see? <laughs> it's not that difficult, I'm good now. The reason you feel you are good is because you fed the soul. But the time is going to come after another two hours. Or you slept and you woke up and you found the feeling back there. It's still there, it's going nowhere. What you really need to do, brother, sister, is supposed, you're supposed to close the door and say it is time for some refueling. Oh, when you are driving on the highway and then you see that your fuel is running low, it's not a time to pray in tongues, brothers. It's not a time to pray in tongues. What you need to do is to say, Father, I need a filling station right now. And what you do is to pay for the fuel and refill your car. Listen, dear friends, when your battery is low and you found that the power is no longer there. What you, you are not used to, what you are not afraid of before, you are not afraid of the thing. You are not afraid of the future before, but now you are afraid of the future. Somebody listening to me. You are not afraid of what will happen before, but now you are afraid. You are not afraid of the night before, now you are afraid of the night. There are things that were unusual, but now it has become usual. You then say to yourself, no, I need some refueling. Come on, shut the door, shut the window, throw the phone away, and say, I'm going to pray in tongues. And pray some more until you break through. Until you break through, you will reach a place that you will know that I've eaten a gora, a goza. That's what they call it. And then you start praying. And the things you are afraid of, in understanding, you begin to address them. That's how to lead a spirit-filled life. That's how to lead a spirit filled life. Man called Sambra Ketebe Lekabata, Omre Dele Prokapale Hekwasata, and Minan Omre Kalika Tatatosa, and certain understanding begins to come. It begins to come, and then you start addressing certain issues and say, My job is secure. No matter what's going on, my job is secure. What sometimes what happens to our spirit man is that he receives signals that we are not spiritual enough to interpret. So it becomes a discomfort for us. The spirit can see there is something in your future, something in tomorrow that they are planning against you. The spirit starts to check. You feel a check, a loss of peace. Something happens, it's unusual in your spirit man. And what we do many times is say, I think it's because I'm tired. You know, I woke up very early and then it's been a rough road on Lagos, Lagos Street. And then you say all of that. But what you are supposed to do is supposed to lock that door and just press in some more. Someone understand what I'm saying? Listen, because the power is in the person of the spirit. Uh, the same essence. The power that came upon Samson. You, have you read the book of Judges? I want to encourage you to read the book of Judges. I, many of us read the New Testament. But I want you to read the book of Judges. Please, I want to encourage you. Read the book of Judges. That is an action movie. If I'm going to do a movie, I, I'm going to just go to the book of Judges and the book of Acts. And I'm going to have a synchronism between two. And I'm going to just bring some crazy acts. Uh, I mean, it's in the book of Judges, you will find a man by the name of Ochtner. I mean, that guy was so good, uh, uh, and then he went and then killed the king Eod. And how did he even do that? He actually lied to the king. I mean, there are crazy stuff that happen in the book of Judges, crazy stuff. Is there you will find Gideon that crashed the altar of Baal and destroyed Baal and raised another altar. It's there again uh, that you will find a man that was called a bastard. Uh, and then they had to come to him and he signed a deal with them. Uh, if you people will have me lead you to war, then I will become your leader. And they agree that the bastard should become the leader. <laughs> you see, all of that in the book of Judges. It was in that same book of Judges that Samson's father had a visitation. His mother had a visitation. An angel came and it was there that Samson. You see, what am I going to as it concerns that is that the Bible records as it concerns Gideon, as it concerns Ehud, as it concerns Othniel, that the Spirit of the Lord came upon them and they did powerful things. But when he came to Samson, the Bible says, and the Spirit came mightily upon him. You see, the Spirit came mightily, the Spirit came upon us. But when he came to Gideon, the Bible says, and the Spirit came mightily upon him. Little wonder he himself by his hand could destroy a lion by his hand. One day they locked him in the city. Like a toll gate, they locked him. Locked him, locked the gate, threw the key away. Samson did not even pray. 
The Bible says, the Spirit came mightily upon him. And Baba just got there and raised the gate with his own hand and took the gate to the hill and dropped it there for them so that he can go and fix it back and dropped it there for them and started going. When you read such crazy act, you will know that it is so impossible. In fact, the more you read it, the more you doubt it. And that tells you that it was impossible for a human being to do that. You can't remove a gate in my house by yourself. You can't even remove your own door by yourself. For somebody to remove the old gate to a city. Why? Because the spirit came mightily upon him. Can I ask you, the same spirit that came upon Samson, uh, is it that same spirit that you carry now? Now that, no, no, don't be quick to answer that question. I'm talking about the power of the spirit. The same spirit that came upon him by the name of Samson, is it that same spirit that is in you and that comes upon you for an assignment? Is it the same? Are you sure? Are you sure? No, 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 you are, you are, no, you are joking now. There's a difference. You see, dispensation, I mean, don't you think it's a different spirit? This is a New Testament that you are now. Eh? No, no, I'm, 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 not, I'm trying to teach scriptures here. I'm not, I'm not trying to convince you. You know, something happened in the Old Testament. In the time of the law, you are in the time of grace. Is it the same spirit? If it's the same spirit, stand up on your feet. The same spirit. It's the same spirit. Stand on your feet. Stand now. Don't be afraid. Are you sure? Okay, so if it's not the same spirit, you can remain seated. But I think that almost everyone is standing. If it's the same spirit, why could you not cast out devils? If it's the same spirit, why are you afraid of your future? The old city came to look for Samson. And they came to Jerusalem. Now look at, you said it's the same spirit. They came to Jerusalem and said, give us Samson, give us Samson. And Samson told the, the Israelites, he said, I'll come down. I'll go to them. You don't kill me. But I'll go to them. And with an ox bow of an axe, he killed a thousand of them, of the Philistines. A thousand of them. If he's the one, why do you say you don't have money? The same spirit. If it's the same spirit, why could you not sleep at night? Because they told you that somebody died. If it's the same spirit, oh, why do you believe that that pattern in your family will happen? You see, if JJ asks the question, if you are tired of standing up, it's because you decided you are going to stand up because you believe it's the same spirit. If it's the same spirit, why don't you have customers? And an Ogbandi has customers and you are comfortable. If it's the same spirit that's in full of power, the Bible says in Acts chapter 10, verse 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. I thought that I could see with palm oil, with olive oil, with vegetable oil, with cucumber oil. Oh, sorry, there's no cucumber oil. Then with all kinds of oil. The Bible says how God anointed him with the Holy Ghost. Was he a sorrow? No, no kind of oil with the Holy Ghost. That same anointing is what you carry. And they say they are going to sack people. You can't sleep. God said, join ministry. You can't. Because you are thinking of money. The same spirit. I want to ask that question again. Is it the same spirit? Or you have changed your mind. A problem is going on in our world. And Solomon spoke concerning it. In Proverbs. He said there is an evil I've seen in the world. He said kings are walking on grounds. And he said servants are walking on horses. The people who do evil and who follow witches and wizards are the one walking on are the one on us and believers are the ones on the ground. Are you tired? Have your seat. The Lord says, start a business. He said, with what? He said, start with him. That's all you need. 
In the New Testament, the word used for power again and again is the word dunamis. Somebody say it means do not miss. Dunamis means a power that has the ability to recreate itself like a dynamo. So for that battery I spoke to you about, you have to recharge it. But you see, for the power of the Spirit, it's like, the closest to it on the earth is like solar power. The sun power never goes down no matter how much you use it. No matter how much a believer uses the power of God, the power still increases. Do you see that? But the reason it is not being used is because you do not believe in that power. One of the essence of somebody who believes in the power is that he will speak boldly and loudly. Your confession tells me what you believe. Your words tell me what you believe. Your fears tells me what you believe. Listen to this. Faith is a belief in God. Fear is a belief in the devil. I believe in God. When you become afraid, it's also saying you believe in the devil or the circumstances around you. Nothing tells us about fear more than it is a statement as it concerns our faith. Means that our faith is defective. Is somebody listening to me? Listen, dear friends. Kenneth Hagin, I want to mention some names to you. Kenneth Hagin, you know that man? You've heard him before? Archbishop Idauza, have you heard that name before? Catherine Kuma, have you heard that name before? Smith Wigglesworth, have you heard that name before? All of them have different kind of ministries. You agree with that? But you know there's something that is synonymous in all of their ministry. It is the power of God. Power! Stop living the Christian life without power. It's an abnormality. See, I told the Lord, when the Lord called me to ministry and I told him, I said, listen, if you do not empower me, I'm not going to go anywhere. I will not preach the gospel that lacks power. I will not. I will not believe God for things I can cast out. It was a God's general one day. It was Ag Besson the Dauza. They were having this meeting, which is in his state. The state he came from, which is they decided that they were going to have a conference. You are not there, but it was your state. That tells you the kind of witches that are from some people's states. You know, this confidence witches, you know, for you to say you want to have a what witches conference. And they declared it on TV that they were going to have such conference. And the news came to NTA. And Archbishop Idauza went on NTA and said, that meeting will not hold. That is the headquarters. He's here. And that meeting will not hold. They called again. They came. The, the <laughs> president of Witches Association Worldwide came and said that it is not a function of, it's not for deliberation. That not, nobody can stop them. Not even Jesus. Are you following what I'm saying? That they have, they have decided they are going to have it. And witches are coming from everywhere. Himalayas. Everywhere witches are coming. And that was I said, they don't even need Jesus. That he is here. Forget Jesus. I am here. It is not holding. Two days before the conference, they announced themselves that they are not in the conference again. Why? Because a man stood in his position. It's either you die or you die. It's better to even die now than to die in 10 years from now. Let me explain that to you. Dying now, people that will cry will not be much. Dying 10 years from now, you would have children. You see what I'm saying? That is how I came into power. I told the Lord, I, they said I had some sicknesses. And I was not married. And I told the Lord, if you don't hear this, also, it's okay. But I cannot go and preach and tell people that you can heal. And I'm battling with us. I say, man of God cannot even fast. I say, the Lord, Kana, Shana, Dala, Topi, Allah. The Lord says, I should tell you, fast for seven days. And even me, Dala, Tala, cannot fast. Because Tala, Dala, ask us. Are you following what I'm saying? So I told the Lord. And I remember that day I was sick nigh unto death. The thing, if you have had ulcer pain before, you become very coughed like this. I was coughed. The pain was coming from the inside. 
I told myself, let me see what I told myself. It's better to die now. At that time, I was not married. If you know what I'm saying. I just figured that my parents have five children. If one dies, it should not be a big problem. It remains four. John, I'm telling you how I was thinking. That it remains four. And they will cry, but the crying will not be so much. I mean, after one year, they will just be remembering you. Oh, the memory of the blessed. And they can even have a foundation if they have money. It's not like they need foundation. Do you understand what I'm saying? And all of that. So I just felt it was okay. It's either it works or it doesn't work. And that day, I began to pray in the spirit. The thing was not coming out as loud as it, but it was still coming out. And then I was covered. And then it came to me that if you are healed, then start doing like this, small, small. I couldn't do it as once. Then I start raising myself from an erectus erectus. You know, if you, your students of sociology understand that the first, uh, they say homo sapiens, and then you develop to homo erectus and all of those things. And then I started coming up, coming up, until I did it once, and since that day also has now come back. Let me say this to you. No, there's not an amen. It's, it's not coming back. There's no place to come. The truth is simple. Until you said it is enough, it will not be enough. Until a man decides, I don't care what power is in your family's house. You see, the way we talk in Nigeria is like all the witches and wizards and the evil come from African countries alone. I don't care where they come from. The witches are useless if they cannot help to solve the problem of Nigeria. That's one area that I know that they are very useless thing. You understand? Uh, white witches are there. At least the white land is better. You understand? So you can't come and oppress me with your madness. Do you understand what I'm saying? So one of the things you must learn to do is to say it is enough. It's enough. Your joblessness is enough. Some people are working jobs that are crazy. That's the best way to describe it. And you are there. Yeah, it will be better. It will be better. Last year, that's what you said. This year, until you say something and declare it with boldness and confess it and do whatever you need to do, it won't get better. It won't. I'm asking you to take control of your life because Jesus has done everything he will ever do for you. The power of the Spirit is inside of you. And he will do what he will do. Listen, I, I was going to give you all those points. Na, 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 na. But, like I said to you before, today is not even doing me like I should preach. So, <laughs> The Holy Spirit, number one, is the... How do I know the Holy Spirit is the power of God? Because the Bible calls him the power of God. It calls him, not by power, not by mind, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6. I am full of power. For by the Spirit of God, Micah chapter 3, and then verse 8. The Bible calls him the power of God. Do you remember something happened in Matthew chapter 12? Matthew chapter 12, I don't know whether you found it, but something happened in Matthew chapter 12. Have you, have you read scriptures to that level? Matthew 12, something important happened. And I want you to follow me very closely. In Matthew 12, verse 28, the Bible says Jesus had casted out the devil. Hey! Somebody say, you see all these devil you talk about. They are real. Jesus casted out the devil. Do you know what they said? They said he had casted out the devil by the power of the demons. Of demons. I, and he said, I have cast out demons. Read that scripture for me. But if I cast out demons by the So which power did he do it? Speak to me. You see, that's why you can't cast out devils. Because you are relying on yourself. The spiritual race is not about your ability. It's not, I feel strong now. You know some of you, after you have prayed in tongues for two hours, I feel, I feel good now. I, I shout out. Hey, you come here. You are depending on what you have done, your effort, what you put in the bank. Jesus said, I did it by the power of the Spirit. Little wonder when he got to Lazarus' tomb. He didn't pray. He didn't call a crusade. I didn't call a prayer meeting. He said, I want to thank you, Father, because you have had me. And then what did he do? Lazarus! And the Bible says, if the Spirit that raised Christ from the dead. That's why he knew that was the Spirit that answered. When he said that, the Spirit went to walk and Lazarus was quickened. Lazarus did not want to wake up. How did I know? The Bible said, when he stood up, which is in abnormal for you to stand up after you have been roped, they had to remove the grave clothes. They had to, because a spirit came in as he spoke, and the spirit raised him up. Try and rise up without your hand. 
Have you tried it before? Yeah. We'll do it here. Uh, you come. So people must understand what we are talking about. It's a rug, so it's a good place. If I was preaching a CAC church, that's how you would have lied down in, on the sand. Yeah, lie down on the floor. That's how he walks. <laughs> oh, yeah, stand up. Don't use your hand. Oh, yeah. Don't use your hand. Don't. Your hand must be by your side. Oh, yeah, go down back. Praise God. Now, your hand must not leave this side. Stand up. And your legs should not move because it was, it was tied. So, pardon my... So, oh, yeah, stand up. Come on now. Come on now. Stand up, stand up. Come on, you can do it. Pray in tongues more. Pray in tongues more. Pray in tongues. Kapa! Eluta! Rise! Lazarus was dead, dead. Was tied. And down everywhere, tied. And Bible says, Jesus said, Lazarus! Come forth! How did he come forth? Because the Bible said, when he came out, they then began to remove the grave clothes. How did he stand? The spirit that raised Christ from the dead. If that same spirit dwells in you, it will quicken your mortal bodies. There was a quickening. It wasn't because he was tired. You can put your hand in your pocket, the spirit can push you off. That's why I tell people your negativity and your inadequacies and disadvantage does not mean God cannot take you to the place he's going to take you to. Because not you, it is the spirit. Someone say, I can't get there until I pray 24 hours. Pray, pray, pray. Because pray, no, they play. The devil is at work. I know they lie. I'm telling you it's a truth. But listen, dear friends, if you begin to deify prayer, deify your method and spiritual discipline, you are not going to get into the fullness of what God has. There's still something called mercy. There's something called grace. There's something called the power of the Spirit. Lazarus, come forth. Abbas stood up. So what you are going to do, lie down like that. Lie down like that. So, Lazarus is going to come forth. And how Lazarus is going to come forth is that noble and Allen. Lazarus, come forth. Lazarus, come forth! Boom! That's the same power that raised him from the dead. That's the power. The condition could not have made him rise. Because the condition, it was tied. I know your condition is bad. Your parents don't even have money. And the Lord said you should build a company. <laughs> see your condition, you are on the highland, your parents are in Ogun State. You see what I'm talking about? Your condition, that one is even better. Some people, their, their condition is that their parents are in my village. You know how that is bad? You don't know. My village is not on the map. Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you get what I'm saying? So, 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 that's how bad it is. And the Lord said, you are going to have a blue chip company. Say blue. I'm ready with the red chip. Just give me red chip. I don't, I don't need so much money. But the Lord said, you should do it. The Lord said, you should build him a ministry. You're saying, I cannot. I cannot. I'm tired. I'm not capable. I'm tired. There is no money in the account. I'm tired. I can't even pay one week rent. I'm tired. Lazarus was tied. But the moment the word came, the ability to perform also came. It is the Lord who watches over his word to perform it. It's never going to be you. It's going to be him. For God is not slack concerning his promises, as some people count slackness. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 12. Jeremiah 1, 11. What did you see, Jeremiah? What do you see, man of God? He said, I see a branch of an almond tree. He said, you have seen clearly. He said, because I watch over my word to perform it. Therefore, when the word has come forth, the performance will also come forth. As he called you to start a ministry, man of God, go and be looking for CEO, CFO. Go and be looking for land because he's going to perform it. As he told you that's your wife, come on, begin to look at the wedding day because that's going to happen. As he told you that you are going to build that company, man of God, begin to behave like a CEO. You are not lying. You are not faking it. You are living in faith. How is it going to happen? The power of the spirit. What we do many times is that we try to rise like he was trying to rise. 
You say, mm, because you have seen the struggle. Oh, Lagbara. You see, you will struggle. You will struggle. Sometimes you think I'm making effort. Because at least before your back was down, but now you are up. But he said, come forth. But that's not the only thing he said. He said, take the grave clothes of him. Sometimes the grave clothes must go first before your reality would come. What is a grave clothes? It represents the attire of our former life. It represents the attire of your past experiences. It represents the attire of wickedness. Sometimes you must remove it. And there's a portion of that in scriptures. The Bible says he has conveyed you from the kingdom of darkness. And he has delivered you into the kingdom of his dear son, even Jesus. Colossians chapter, chapter 1 and I believe verse 13. It's conveyed you from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of his dear son, Jesus. Listen, dear friends, you are conveyed. You must then begin to behave like those who are conveyed. You must begin to think like those who are conveyed. You must begin to have the mindset of those who are conveyed. We have become so little in our mindset. That's why we are walking in little. We are not crazy about Jesus because we do not understand what Jesus has done for us. He's not asking for your effort or your cooperation. He will do all of it, but he can't do it without you. Because the heavens of the heavens are the Lord's, but the earth has he given to the sources of men. Therefore, God cannot even come on the earth without the permission of you. Therefore, he needed Mary's womb to be able to get on the earth. Because if he had come any other way, he would have been a thief. That's why the devil is a thief. Because we don't know how he got here. No matter how Mary delivered him. How did he get here? You see, that's how you, when you say a thief came to my house. Why you call them thief is because you didn't open the door for them. You didn't know how they got inside. You understand what I'm saying? He's a burglar. He's a thief. Jesus came through the womb of Mary. He was delivered the proper way because that's the access for everyone to have permission to walk on the earth. But there was no permission as it concerns the devil. Therefore, don't let the devil lie to you. Jesus says something and I want us to look at it. Matthew 28 and then verse 18. And I think if you can get this and then we are good to go home. Don't you think so? Matthew 28 and then verse 18. Uh, Jesus said something and it's very powerful. He said, and I, I think if you get that, uh, it will make your life better. Amen. Amen. If you get this, it's going to make your life better. And Jesus said, I feel like sitting down and just reading this. What did he say? Jesus said, I came and spoke to them. So don't let's say Jesus came and spoke to them. I mean, that's how we read the scriptures and it looked like it's not real. Praise God. Let's just say Jesus said and came to Emmanuel. And Jesus said to Emmanuel, praise the Lord, man of God. Your hair is coming back. You have to speak to it. You should not go back again. Let it come to the front. Amen. You have what you say. Keep saying it. Right? I've seen it happen. Glory be to God. Amen. 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 Glory to God. You can have what you... Come and say it louder. I can have what I say. Praise yeah. God. You know what matters? They don't need to believe you. Yes, sir. You need to believe you. Aya. <laughs> Amen. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying. So Jesus came and spoke to Emmanuel, saying, What did he say, man of God? He said, All authority. He said, All authority. Has been given to me in heaven. Has been given to me in heaven and on earth. You are a science student. Yeah. Say, are you afraid? Okay. I'm a science student. You're a science student. All right. <laughs> right. What is the difference between power and authority? Did I say you should sit down? What is the difference between power and authority? Power and authority. Power is the ability to do work. Is he right? Authority. Eh? Part time for physics students. Yes, part time. <laughs> time. Ability to do work part time. All right? What's authority? Authority is power. So, if we talk about power, power means I can do this by myself. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. I can't lift this guy up. I can't lift him up. But I can't lift him up. Praise God. That's power, right? You know, that's the good thing about church. When you see, you can't lift him up. Everybody looks at that side. It's okay. So if I really have to do something I didn't want you to see, I'll just distract you. And all. But that's just homiletic, right? So you see what we did now? Ability to do so. I can carry. That's power. 
But Jesus did not say he gave you power. You see, if he had said he gave you power, that would have been a problem. Because power means ability to do, then I must be sufficient of myself to beat them. Did somebody listen to me? I must be sufficient of myself to cast away devils. I must look at witches and be able to say, and I'll do that. And if he says anything, I slap it. But when I slap it, I'm not slapping her. I'm slapping the thing inside of her. How ridiculous is that? <laughs> because it's the spirit. But I'm dealing with the spirit. So but if I slap you now, it's you that will feel it. <laughs> so it means that I do not have the power to do. You see, many times believers want to have the power. Because you like ability. Money, when you have money, you feel like I'm good. Because that's the ability to do. You always like ability to do. Ability to do. But in the spiritual, we do not have ability to do. And that's our problem. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? I'm trying to teach you some deep stuff here. Right? So that because I don't have the ability to do, I have a problem. I have a problem because I woke up and had a bad dream. And I don't feel inside of me that I can face that vampire that I saw. I feel limited. Because you can say they are not demon, they are not demon, but my sisters have gotten married and they don't have a fruit of the womb. Three of them. That is not luck. Their husband cannot just have semen problem. <laughs> There's something out there. <laughs> so, I'm afraid. Pastor, I'm afraid. Don't tell me I'm afraid. And you are thinking, if I can bring off a child by myself, I won't have a problem. Because that's the ability to do. But Jesus did not give you ability to do. The Bible, that scripture, give me that scripture again. He said he has given you what? Authority. Authority. Now, let me break it down for you to understand it. A non-human being, non-living thing, can have authority. Non-living thing can have authority. Do you doubt me? Let me explain it to you. If you are going on Ekwe, Leki Ekwe Road, and then the trailer is coming, you are driving a trailer, massive something and then woo, and then you see the red lamp what does that red tell you can it stop you can that lamp does that lamp have the ability to stop a trailer can the trailer crush it you believe it can are you sure so why did he stop because he has the authority to stop. If men can obey non-living thing, how about living thing? Now, I remember one day, I was driving very fast. Sometimes I drive very cold. I don't call it very fast, but sometimes I drive very cold. And there was this policeman. You know, sometimes you don't know why, how they stop. I think they should look at the speed you are coming before they stop. But... Nigerian police, nah, police are sure you get. So the guy just decided to stop. So I marked the brake and I and the thing stopped. Now, if I want to run him over, it's not me. Can my machine run him over? So he can't stop me. He doesn't have the power to stop me. He doesn't have the ability to stop my car. But he has the authority to stop my car. That authority is the authority of government. It's the authority of state. Given to him. And because of that authority that is wearing. Therefore, sometimes when you go on this Lagos Equal Road, sometimes you see some thugs. Agbero, they say they want to clear traffic and they are stopping you. You won't stop sometimes. Why? Because they don't have... But when they wear that uniform, that uniform tells you they have the authority of the state to stop you. So you stop. If you are here and you don't stop, I'm not with you. You should stop. So, you stop because he has the authority to. You know what Jesus said? Jesus said, I'm not giving you power. Power is less. Power is for fighters. Power is for resumenians. I'm not interested in giving you power. Because if I give you power, it means that every day of your life, you will be fighting. Every day of your life, you will be fighting. You wake up from sleep, you are fighting. Every day, you will be fighting. 
believers will come to church tired and sleep because they have been fighting all their life because he gave them ability to do so that if you don't fight the devil, you, you will not win. So you fight the smaller devil, the lesser devil, principality, power, you fight them all. So that now that you have black hair, you should have been white because the power to do. You keep grinding. That's what they say. You keep grinding. But listen, that's not what he gave you. He just decided, I'm going to give you authority. So that it does not matter whether they are higher power or lesser demons. It doesn't matter whether they are witches or principalities. It doesn't matter whether they are trailers or whether they are vague cars. It doesn't matter what they are. If I can raise my hand and I'm wearing the vested clothes of the garment of righteousness in Christ Jesus, sir, I raise my hand and I say, devil, demon, you can't come near this place. We are doing God's work here. You are not permitted. If I raise my hand and my voice is going to stop. But you see, if you do not speak and you do not raise your hand, it's going to come. Because the trailer will keep coming until that man raises his hand. All the lamps say stop. They will keep coming. The reason there are so many invasions in our lives and in our homes is not because Jesus has not done it. It's because we have refused to raise the signal. I say stop. I say stop. Can you see what we are saying? Jesus said it's not because you are powerful. It's not because you have the ability to do. You can't bust these two guys, all things being equal. Praise God, all things being equal, satiris parables. But I don't care whether that demon is 200,000 years old. Like some people preach, you know, there are demons that are so old that when their knowledge, their wisdom, you see, they can say all those rubbish. I'm not interested in where they come from. Like, I'm not interested in where that trailer is coming from. Whether he carries gas or he carries fuel or he carries gasoline or water is not my business. My business is that the authority invested in me in the States says I can tell you to stop and it's going to stop and Jesus said I've given unto you all authority he didn't say some all it means in your spirit use that authority in your finances use that authority in your health use that authority don't use it you can't blame your church or your pastor it's with you do you see what we're saying now I think we are done Jesus said in Luke chapter 4, 14. The Bible says in Luke 4, 14. You know, in Luke 4, 1, something happened. Jesus went in the power of the Spirit. And then he was tested, he prayed 40 days and all of that. In 4, 14, the Bible says, and then he returned in the power of the Spirit. Do you see that? Filled with the Holy Spirit's power. That's the New Living Translation. The New King James says, in the power of the Spirit. How will you return from this meeting? Can I hear you? How will you return from this meeting? Do you know how people who, are, who return from power spirit, do you know what they say? It is not just that it is recorded, it also shows in their words. Give me Luke 4.18. You will find Jesus say something in the synagogue. Ah, Luke 4.18. You see, in 4.14, the Bible says he returned. In the power of spirit. In Luke chapter 4, verse 18. The Bible says, Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. If you don't say anything when you wake up every morning, you've got to say, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to make money. Is that not spiritual? Do you think that's not spiritual? He has anointed me to raise a family. That's spiritual. Jesus talked about what his purpose was. His purpose was to do what? To pray the gospel to the poor. What's your purpose? You've got to be anointed for it. And the anointing is already on you. But if you do not speak, it's not going to be released. The releasing of that anointing is in your speaking. Does somebody understand what I'm saying? The purposes of God for our lives are so mightier than us that we think it cannot be done. Like Lazarus, we are tied. But the Spirit is in us. The Spirit is in us. Is the Spirit in you? Is the Spirit in you? Do you believe that? That you can go in the power of the Spirit. You can go in the power of the Spirit. I feel like I've not thought, but I think I've preached. Amen. Because there's so much where this comes from. <laughs> but I want to go just to what the Spirit wants me to say today. And I, I, I believe I've done all that the Spirit will have me say today. And that is that you need to step up and rise up. We need to stop being lilipitudes. We need to stop being small. 
I'm not born small. You see, sometimes just stand up and start saying things. I refuse smallness. I refuse smallness. I can do all that God says I can do. I am all that God has called me. I have all that God has promised me. I can do because Jesus is with me. I have authority. Therefore, I am creating all the things God said to create. I know that the greater one lives inside of me. I am possible. Things are working for me. Things are falling in line to me in pleasant places. I have a goodly inheritance in the name of Jesus. Though my beginning be small. Yay! My latter hand is great. Hallelujah! If we don't celebrate you, nobody will. If you don't rejoice at your testimony, men will not listen to that testimony. You must rejoice now before he comes. Before he comes. Sometimes introduce yourself in your room. I now present to you the CEO of Labord Homes and Realty. And then you say, you call your names, Emmanuel Onobo. I now introduce to you EO Concept. CEO, EO, said Emmanuel Onobo, I've given him name. EO Concept. The best, uh, the best uh, um, cyber security company in, in Nigeria. And then you, you, even after you have taken Gary, and then you just come in. Amen. Hallelujah. I just want to return all the praise to God. Um, you know, I never know. Can I sing? He says it's a conference. See, can I sing? I never know. You will favor me this way. Praise God. I don't want us to sing that song. It just, it's just something that, you know, you are, God sees you there in the heavens and says, this guy, this guy believes me. This guy believes me. You know that scripture of Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6. Bible says without faith. It is what? It's impossible to please God. Therefore, if I walk in faith, I'm pleasing him. So, God just looks at him. Oh! Angel, how far about the fire? <laughs> we are on it, we are on it. You have to hasten it up. This guy, believe me. But you see, when you wake up and say, I say you go to bill, they will leave you to be like that. Do you understand what I'm saying? You are bigger than your present situation. You are what God has called you, not what the world has called you. You are what Jesus says you are and not what you think you are. If the word of the Lord has come, power has come. If you have received the gift of the Holy Spirit, you have also received power. And you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come. If I can pray in tongues, then I have power. You may not know people, but you know God. Now, the funny thing or something is that the people start in God's hands. The hands, like the course of a river, it can turn it wherever it pleases. You can enter and they say, I don't even know why I want to give you this job. We'll just give you. It's okay, just give me. <laughs> you don't have to know why. It's that like, you don't have to explain, I can do it. <laughs> this is, they don't know, let them not know. The most important thing is what? Lift up your hands, raise your hands, and just begin to worship. Begin to thank him for that which he has done. Do you understand now what your authority is? Can you begin to thank him for that authority? Can you begin to thank him for that authority? For that power of the spirit that is at work in your life. Can you begin to thank him for that power of the Spirit? Can you begin to thank him? Remember what I said, the same Spirit that was upon Samson, and he did so great a work, is that same Spirit upon you. If you are not living in a reality, it's because you, are, you want to live less than it. It's because in your mind, you are reducing the power of the Spirit. Blow you out. That's why I hear God say, blow out. Blow out in your conceptualization. Blow out in your expectation. Blow out. That company is big. You are making millions. God said to tell you, there is still more. There is still more. The Bible says concerning Jabez, Jabez was more honorable already than all of his family members. But he prayed that the Lord will bless him, that the Lord will enlarge his coast. When I see that prayer, I just begin to think about Jabez's mindset. He was not ready to be the king even of a community. He wanted more. He wanted more. He wanted more. Can you expound your mind? Can you expound your spirits? 
Can you expound your mind? Lesuna maleka borosi ataba. Eyika roda balekra posi ataba. Yes, expand your mind. Just expand it. Just expand it. But don't just expand your mind. Let it show forth in your words. Let it show forth in your proclamation. Can somebody say, I'm anointed of the spirits. I'm anointed of the spirits. I can sing. I'm anointed of the spirits. I can preach. I am anointed of the spirit. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Sir. I'm anointed of the spirit. I'm a builder. I'm a builder. I'm anointed of the spirit. I'm a developer. The anointing of the spirit is upon me. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. Now I'm a counselor. I'm a counselor. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. I'm delivered. Come on now. 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 A barrel sapa. A barrel sata. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. The spirit of supplication has just been released in this house right now. Has just been released in this house right now. Come on. Mako sapa. Mako sata. A bratoto brasata. Oh, come on. Come on. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Now I can teach. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Now I grow my finances. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. I'm an investment expert. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. I'm an expert creator. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. I agree, sir. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. My company is going to the next level. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. I have graceful relationships, sir. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. I have divine connection. I have divine connection. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Come on. Come on. Come on. There is impartation for the next level. As we pray, as we pray, impartation, impartation, impartation for the next level, the reality of the anointing. Now, 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 copa, la cabaria, a bobo valite. Come on, come on, come on. When Zion travel, Zion brought forth, Zion brought forth. You are bringing forth that vision. You are bringing forth that vision. Lagos cannot steal that vision from you. Lagos will not steal that vision from you. Nigeria will not steal that vision from you. The systems will not steal that vision from you. This morning, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Now I can build. Now I can sell. Now I can sell. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Now I can sell. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Now I can go forward. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Now I can increase. Come on. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Now I can go. Ay, 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 Come on. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. You have stayed on that level enough. You have stayed on that level enough. You have stayed on that level enough. Hey, God. I pray true. Lord, I pray forth. Lord, I pray true. Because of Palia, I pray true. Lord, I pray forth. I am a pastor. The impartation of the Spirit. Holy Ghost told me. He said, I will touch them myself. 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 Open up. Let the channels of your spirit be open. Let the channels of your spirit be open. Declare it. 
declare it. I am Alabasha. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Now I can teach. Now I am creative. Now I make sales. Now that company is getting better. If you don't have anything to say, just keep saying the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. 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 As I said that, there is a quickening in your spirit. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. I declare upon you, the Spirit of the Lord is upon you. The Spirit of the Lord is upon you. The Spirit of the Lord is upon you. As it was on Christ, is upon you. As it was upon Samson, it's upon you. As it was upon Eud, it's upon you.